Hi everyone, this is Thomas Pepin, NHL Talk. I'm Thomas Pepin, and let's talk about the NHL. So, just a couple moments to pull things up and get started here. <clears throat> so, this of course is part two of a now eight-part series uh, evaluating teams cap management Uh Yesterday, in part one, we went over four of the uh, eight teams in the Pacific Division. Uh, and then today, we'll be going over the other four, which include the Vegas Golden Knights, Calgary Flames, Vancouver Canucks, and Edmonton Oilers. Um, and... One last second here. All right, so we will start with the Vegas Golden Knights. They are currently uh, over the cap, of course, because of injuries here, no cap space as a result. Their general manager is Kelly McCrimmon. Um, and the players that put them over, if you weren't aware, they picked up the salary of Shea Weber, who's not expected to play again. Um, Robin Leonard is on LTIR, not expected to play this season. Um, <clears throat> Nolan Patrick on LTIR and Brassois, one of their goalies, is on IR at the moment. So in total, that is uh, 17.3, sorry, 16.3 um, million dollars. That's all... Uh, tied into injuries and everything. So um, that kind of explains why it's over. Uh, now, again, the approach I'll take is to go forwards, defense, goaltenders, uh, talk about the uh, major contracts, the core, the team's flexibility with those contracts, and um, evaluate, give a letter grade, uh, that, uh, of my opinion, of the uh, the team's cap management there. So, uh, first player Jack Eichel, ten million four years remaining. Uh, last year, twenty five points, thirty four games. Previous was eighteen and twenty one, seventy eight, with thirty six goals. Quite good in sixty eight games. Um, and slightly lesser stats. So his goals look like you can expect around 25-ish uh, and points a, a bit below point per game-ish uh, is kind of what you'd expect. So, <laughs> excuse me, um, 10 million, four years, uh, just got off of back surgery, which was uh, controversial in his choice of the type of uh, back surgery. So, uh, yeah, so maybe could be a bit nervous about long-term um, health for the players. So, 10 million, in my opinion, is far too much. As much as he has good upside, young player, uh, only 25 at the moment. This contract puts him up to 29. Salary cap going up. Uh, you would expect over the years, still don't really like 10 million with those concerns. And it's like I said in the previous stream getting towards the 10 million i wouldn't be paying that unless you're a mcdavid or um 
Nathan McKinnon or anything like that. So, um, yeah, so don't really like that contract. Not the worst contract, obviously, because of his upside, and he's obviously a good quality player, but uh, I don't really like that contract myself, um, especially four years if you could have it down to three again, but uh, not always possible. Uh, now, okay, sorry, I should say um, in total is what I would prefer is like three to five the full contract was the Sabres for eight years. So it's not something I would ever do. Uh, but again, I'm just a, a fan. Uh, you can say that I haven't managed a team, so uh, who am I to say? But that's my opinion on it. Um, next, we have Mark Stone, good two-way player. Uh, 9.5 million, five years remaining, eight year contract. I don't like long contracts unless you're the best player in the league. But, um, anyways, let's have a look here. Last year, 30 points in 37 games, previous 61, 21 goals in 55. Uh, 63 points, 21 goals, 65 games, uh, similar stats throughout his career so far. Um, below a point per game, good goal scoring, good two-way player. Uh, justify 9.5 million for eight years. Again, couldn't do it. A lot of money tied up in a player. Uh, yeah, there's no, no way I would ever do a, a contract like that. Again, not the worst contract in the world, but definitely one I wouldn't do. So, um, yeah, another one don't really like, uh, next up, William Carlson, 5.9, five years remaining, uh, his contract again, eight years. Like, I don't understand why you would give eight year contracts. Um, so, uh, 35 points in 67 games, 39 and 56, 46 and 63. Best year was 43 goals, 78 points and 82 games. Now that's pretty crazy. Really good, uh, scoring and stats there, but, um yeah his contract was signed in 2019 so that would have been after the next year where he had 24 goals 56 points in 82 games so i mean not enough of a track record in previous years were 25 points prior to that big leap so how on earth could you give eight year contract i mean 5.9 is not bad but eight years i mean you'd be projecting him to be uh may i guess maybe you're hoping that he keeps performing that well and then you're getting him at a really good inexpensive contract but um yeah so the dollar amount is fine uh all things considered term i just wouldn't give that many years unless it's your star player but um not the worst contract again uh and not much of a gamble because of the price but I don't know. Uh, something I wouldn't do again. Um, then we have Marcia So, five million, two years remaining, six year contract. Uh, last year, 66 points, 30 goals, quite good in 76 games. Previous was 44 points in 55 games. 
47, 22 goals in 66 games, kind of hovers around 25 goals a year uh, and just under a point per game. So good stats. Um, and 5 million per was signed after two good years. No, um, so it was signed in 2018, which would have been halfway into what was his uh, second year of good performance. So a uh, bit early, maybe, I don't know, to give six years but um good scoring from that first year five million per probably a good contract i still again i don't know if i would do it for this player but i mean not bad um yeah just not to my taste uh last forward we'll look at uh riley smith five million three years remaining uh first year of that three-year contract last year 38 points 56 games 25 and 53 54 with 27 goals in 71 um hovers around 20 goals per under a point per game uh five million i'd say not a bad contract maybe would have looked for cheaper but this is where it's it's along the lines of what i would do so overpay short term gives you more flexibility not a bad contract i don't like or i don't dislike it at all so uh yeah not a bad contract there um yeah so don't mind that one now to the um or sorry just before i move on to the d so uh essentially they have players their core signed between two to five years um so not the worst uh so they have some flexibility eventually but um at the dollar figures, it's essentially locking in that core. Uh, yeah, the high-end players are for longer terms, so you're kind of locked into the players you have. And uh, so not overly flexible, not inflexible. Um, yeah, we'll revisit that with the final uh, grade I'll give here. Um, so next is defense, Piet Pietrangelo, uh, 8.8, .8, five years remaining. Uh, and this was a seven year contract. He will be. 37 at the end of that uh already i can say i don't know if i like it um i mean he's a good player we'll, we'll go over his stats but to be 37 making 8.8 .8 million a year ugh, uh i doubt he's going to be perf performing at the same level so not a fan of that contract um but Let's have a look here. So 44 points, 80 games, 23 and 41, 52 in 70, 41 points, 71 games, kind of hovers around 45-ish points. Um, obviously a great defenseman. I uh, won't take that away from him. 
if it was 8.8 in his prime, maybe I still would. I'm not a fan of spending too much on defensemen, even if they're good, because uh, on a goals per dollar spent basis, you're not getting the same value. So um, I would be very hesitant to, to spend that much on a defenseman, but Again, not the worst contract in terms of based on his performance. The turn based on his age, I don't like. Um, so, again, not to my taste, not the worst contract. But, uh, yeah, um, we'll leave it at that. Uh, next is Alec Martinez. Uh, two years remaining, 5.25 per three-year contract, eight points in 26 games, 32 in 53, uh, 16 and 51, hovers around 20 points, it looks like, uh, typically. 20 points for 5.25 per, don't like it. Uh, I mean, decent enough defenseman, but... I don't like the value on that. Um, is it bad? No. It's just not what I would do. So um, good term. Uh, mind you, he's going to be 37 at the end. So uh, again, not to my taste. Don't like the contract, but uh, that's just me. And then Shea Theodore, if I... Point two per three years remaining was a seven year contract. Um, he'll be in his prime age approximately when it expires, or he from now till the end. Um, 52 points, 78 games, 42 and 53, 46 in 71. Hovers around, it looks like 40 points at this point. Uh, so very good value in this case. Like, I mean, 5.2, uh, really good value. Now, he was signed in 2018, which would have been only after his first good year. So it's a heck of a gamble. I mean, man, you must be expecting him to be great. And so uh, it's it's really tough. I, I, I would really struggle with these kind of contracts. I mean, I'm not... Uh, one year of performance to give... Uh, seven years at 5.2 per i mean sometimes it pans out this is a great example where it pans out but geez the thing is is like when you're when you put that money down if you get it wrong then what's gonna happen like <laughs> you won't have any money and you're gonna you're gonna be financially handicapping your team for years uh don't like the contract. It turns out being good, but um, he, he's got good pedigree. Uh, World Juniors for Canada. First round pick. I mean, but I, I don't know. Uh, like I said, good value now, but... And yeah, on defense there... Core is basically two, two, uh, six years uh, locked up, so not super flexible, not inflexible, kind of in the middle there. Um, on defense, last. Um, person we'll take a look at is Robin Leonard, 5.5, or sorry, 5 million, three years remaining. Um, uh, 
that was a five-year contract. Last year, 913 save percentage. Uh, who was it that signed that? was in Vegas. So that was back after they picked him up from Chicago. Okay. Um and yeah, that year, so 918 uh 930 hovers around 9 1 something. Uh Yeah, the high nine ones so nine maybe nine one eight ish is looks like where he sits so good save percentage very good um five million per was after a number of years of experience um good pedigree so i'd say yeah at the time good contract now the problem is is where they got rid of Flurry and kept him. Flurry's getting older, was still playing well, in my opinion. Wanted to go with a younger goalie for their long term stability, I guess. I don't know. So it's a good contract. It's just over the alternative, I don't know. Um, that's tough to say. So, um, but yeah, not a bad contract. So, um, so altogether, not inflexible, not flexible either. Um, a lot of contracts I wouldn't do. Uh, giving money too early to players that haven't demonstrated consistent performance. So I don't like the contracts for that reason. Um, again, you'll see... So um, Shea Theodore, it turns out now that it's a great contract, but I don't know, cost certainty. But I, to not know if the player is going to play well, I don't know. Um, yeah, so in my opinion, it's a good roster. Obviously, I've competed for a couple multiple years, so well put together good scoring um problem is right now is they need goaltending and they don't have it in their depth so um so i mean it's tough at this point for them they might not make the playoffs this year they're kind of a bubble team in my opinion so um yeah so but perennial cup contender they've done well with their contracts in terms of them panning out, but I don't like the contracts. So just because they've really put together a good team that competes every year, I would be crazy not to give them uh, at least, I don't know, a B minus, but um, it's cap management management we're talking about. So uh so I, yeah it was great the previous years it might be good for the next couple of years but i see them running into problems in three to five years so at three three years from now two five years from now so um so yeah i mean i would give it a b minus I would give it worse if I could, but their performance has been too good for me to say worse. So, uh, so we'll give a B minus for, for Vegas here. Um, next we'll move over to the Calgary flames. Calgary is 81.126 million uh cap spending uh 1.374 uh cap space their gm is brad 
Triliving, Triliving, uh, and uh, yeah, let's have a look at their team. So starts at the top with Kadri. They just signed. Uh, he's seven million per seven years remaining. Um, last year, eighty-seven points, twenty-eight goals, seventy-one games. Quite good, obviously, uh, with Colorado uh, previous year. So this is where I don't really like the the contract because uh, his track record behind that is not as good. So 32 in uh, 56 games, 36 points in 51, 44 in 73. Few good years, uh, 55 points, 32 goals in 80 games. Uh, 61 points, 32 goals, 82 games. Uh, but those are some years behind us now. So like six years ago. So, um, and then puts up a good year last year on a, on a powerhouse team, not on a powerhouse team, in my opinion, this year, 7 million, I wouldn't say is a bad dollar figure necessarily. But um, seven years, that's going to put him at <laughs> 39. Oh, God. I just I don't know how these people decide on these contracts. Like, that is just so unreal. Uh, bad contract for term. Good dollar value. Just, like, I know... Um, they do this kind of stuff because, well, okay, so sorry. I don't know enough about the, the fine details of the cap, but uh, when people retire, I f I'm not sure how, if any amount stays around after they retire. I, I don't think it does. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, that's outside of my expertise. Um but he, I don't know, just because you know for sure some of those years that he's playing, um, getting paid $7 million and he's going to be producing at something like 30 points in a season. Like 30 points, $7 million, that's a horrible um, value you're going to get out of a player. So don't like that contract, really don't understand. Um obviously a good player but you can't project <laughs> for seven years to be playing at 39 and producing 20 some odd goals and nearly a point per game no way so i mean i don't like that contract but um yeah i just don't i don't get it um huberto uh another signing uh, pretty recent. So last year on a 5.9 million contract and then his extension goes for six years at, or sorry, uh, his extension goes for eight years at 10.5. And so again, this is where, is he a best in the league player to be getting into the 10 millions? So look at his stats. 115 points, 30 goals in 80 games. Very good stats. Um, 60 points, 20 goals, 55 games. Very good again. Uh, 78 points, 23 goals, 69 games. Very good. 92, 30 goals, 82 games. Very good. Very consistent track record for recent history. Um, is... So last year was kind of quite high. Um, lesser stats on some of those years because of missed games, but projects to be ballpark that amount um, as what he got last year. So, or well, slightly less, but uh, around that. So, yeah, obviously a steal this year um, at 5.9. Moving forward. 
for, uh, like I said, eight years, puts him at 37. Uh, great for maybe a few years, but then there, he's not producing at that rate at 37. I doubt it. I highly doubt it. So, again, term term's always a problem here, and I know – Sometimes that's the only way you can keep a player, but uh, down the line, uh, so seven to eight years from now, they're going to have Kadri's contract, his contract, and where you can't shed it. So, so I don't like the contract. Not the worst in the world again, but it's the term. Um, sign a guy for eight years when he's 25 great uh sign a guy when he's 29 for eight eight no when he's 29 with a year remaining then eight years so essentially nine years like it's just oh it's unreal um don't like the contract not to my taste but again not worst in the world all things considered uh, next, Mangiapani, or Mangiapani, um, 5.8, three years remaining of a three-year contract. Last year, 55 points, 35 goals, very good in 82 games. Previous years, 32 points in 56, 32 in 68. So one good year. Uh... Gets a three-year contract, 5.8. Uh, losing two of their best players, um, Chuck and uh, Goudreau. Can he get that same performance with this roster? Uh, maybe. So, yeah. I mean, if he can get the same performance, that's a steal. Like, that's a very good contract if he regresses back to some of his normal stats i'd say it's an overpay but 26 years old three years that's a good contract because there's no there's no real risk out of it inexpensive you can shed it easy only a few years if you need to ride it out so very good contract in my opinion there um backland two years remaining 5.35 six year contract uh last year 39 points 82 games 32 in 54 45 points in 70 47 with 21 goals in 77 so um hovers around 40 points a year uh for 5.35, I'd say slight overpay, but not the worst. Uh, they gave him that contract in 2018, which would have been after a few decent years. So uh, at the time, would have been a good contract. So yeah. Good contract. Six years is fine at what his age would have been. Because uh, what? That's one, two, three, four years ago. Would have been 29. So that's a good contract. I mean, 5.35, even though the term uh, is longer than I would typically go for. Six years with a guy that's relatively young, has been performing track record. Great contract, in my opinion, there. Uh, yeah, so that one's not bad. Just unfortunate that the performance is slightly less, but I mean, who's, who's to say it stays that way? It's not a bad contract. Um, Lou Cheech, uh, 5.25, one year remaining. That one they inherited from Edmonton. Um, <laughs> Peter Shirelli, not known for having done a good job as a GM, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, 
Um, geez, seven years at 5.25 for Lucic. I don't know. Um, it was when 2016. 2016. After some good years, so. I don't know. Um, and it came up to his age now. So it's not I, not the worst, I guess, in terms of timing. Duration, seven years for Lucic. I don't know. Um, last year, 21 points, 82 games. Not good. 23 and 56, 20 and 68, 20 and 79. Had some years of 60 points and 80 with like 20 goals, but those years are much behind him. So at the time of the contract, it wouldn't have looked bad because his track record was good. But um, yeah, it's tough. Sometimes you just, you project that they maintain, but they don't. So wouldn't say it's the worst, but that's where you got to be careful with your terms. So seven years for a guy that's not your high end talent, I just wouldn't do that kind of term. So not a good contract, but that's not their fault. Uh, they didn't make it. They did trade for him, though, so that's another story. Um, yeah, and then we'll... Yeah, we'll ignore the rest, I guess, uh, of the Fords for now, so... Core for four words. Uh, what is it? Eight years. So like two to eight years, kind of their core for four words. Again, don't like term because of what, how old they, they'll be at the end of the term. So uh, not really much flexibility with how much is locked up at the high end there. So uh, not very good there. Um, on D, they have Noah Hannafin, 4.95, two years remaining. Was a six-year contract last year, 48 points, 81 games, very good. 15 and 47, 22 and 70, 33 and 80. Um, hovers around, I guess you could say 30 points per year at 4.95. That's decent contract, I guess. Uh, for value, six years. Um, so it was made when he was young, made in 2018. So after a couple of good years when he's young. So, I mean, very good contract, I would say, in this case. But that was, uh, no, it was made by Calgary. So anyways, yeah, uh, good contract for Calgary there. Uh, I'd say, uh, yeah, that's a good one there. Uh, Rasmus Anderson, 4.55, four years remaining, uh, six year contract last year, 50 points in 82 games. Very good. 21 and 56, 22 and 70, 19 and 79. So it looks like he's a 20 point defenseman, maybe an anomaly last year, but it's hard to say, of course, because it could be trending upwards because he's younger. Um, contract was made in 2020, which was after not one good year and half of another year at 4.55. I don't like that contract, but... Um, Am I getting that right? Yeah. It was made in January. Yeah. So <clears throat> don't like the contract at the time. Might have panned out 
um, six years wouldn't have done with that track record. Inexpensive though, so I mean it's not the worst. So not a bad contract, but I wouldn't have done it. Um, not for that term. Uh, last guy we'll touch on for defense is Tanev, Christopher Tanev. 4.5, two years remaining of a four-year contract. Last year, 28 points in 82, 12 in 56, 20 in 69. Uh, looks like he's around 18 points per year um at 4.5 that's an overpay but i think he's more of a defensive defenseman anyways but still i wouldn't pay that much for a defensive player i don't know uh again in this case not a bad contract i would say not a good contract either to my taste but um not the worst there uh, so defense, the core, they have for two to, oh, sorry, I should touch on the Uyghur extension. So sorry, he's get he has 3.25 this year. Uh, and then after that, he has eight years, 6.25. Uh, he'll be 29. Puts him at 37. <sighs> Jeez, these terms. And when they decide to do it too, it's just the worst. Um, last year, 40 points in 80, 44 points, sorry, in 80 games, 36 in 54, 18 in 45, 15 in 64. So looks like a 30 point defenseman, probably uh, ballpark. So a good defenseman, obviously. Um, geez, it's just to think that he's going to be 37 towards the end of that, making 6.25. Like, <clears throat> I just, uh, I don't, don't like the contract for the term because a chunk of those years are going to be useless value years. So like, probably three of those years and you're going to have to try to shed a salary of 6.25. Like just don't like it. So, um, yeah, good player, but don't like the extension for the term. Um, yeah. And then, so like I was saying there, defense cores two years to, uh, nine years, <laughs> but mostly between two and four. So some flexibility, not at the higher end price, but uh, yeah. Markstrom, their goalie, six million, four years remaining uh, of a six-year contract. Um, 0.922 last year, 0.904. 918, 912, 912. So towards the mid to high 91s uh, save percentage. So pretty good. Um, obviously a well-regarded goalie. Six million was signed um, in 2020. When was it? October. So that was after some decent years. So six million, like this is where, okay, so that's great value. Six million for a good starting goaltender with a track record for six years to lock up a good goalie. Uh, when it expires, he'll be uh, 36. Like great contract. I just don't understand how they have these variances of like bad contracts in my opinion. And then these really like, it's probably an underpay for that solid of a goalie. So it's just, I, uh, you scratch your head about some of these deals that they make. Um, 
it's a really good contract for him. Um, so yeah, all together for Calgary, they've got too much at the high end locked up. Uh, what is it? 16, 23, 23 million of their cap locked up to some players that are going to be like 47 and stuff. Like it's like, or sorry, 37. It's like nearing their forties and they're getting paid crazy numbers. They won't be able to shed those salaries. They're not going to get good value. So they're going to probably struggle with their cap uh, in something like six years. So if you want to win a Stanley Cup and that's an investment, then okay, maybe. And you're okay with some bad years, but there it's cap management I'm talking about. So that's not good management. That They're not going to win, in my opinion, a cup with this roster with that money locked up and stuff to round out the roster so some good contracts some bad contracts so i mean and i don't know i don't think they're that strong of a of a team this year not a bad team they could go far but uh in a weak western conference in my opinion so uh, in this case I give them a C. It's just, again, it's long term cap management, not good. Um, not the worst, but not good. So I'd give them a C. Um, next, we'll move on to Vancouver. Vancouver is over the cap, have some LTIR, uh, no cap space. GM is uh, Patrick Alvin. Uh, LTIR is Michael Furland, and then IR is Myers, Kev, and Dermot. Um, okay, so forwards, 7.35 per for uh, Elias Pedersen, two years remaining, a three-year contract. Man, this guy's a stud of a player, so I... See, these are the kind of players I'd lock up longer term, maybe not full term, but longer term. Um, yeah, three-year contract, two years remaining. Last year, 68 points, 32 goals in 80 games, 21 points in 26. Uh, that was a, he had some injuries there. 66 points, 27 goals in 68 games. Uh, 66 points, 28 goals, 71 games. Like, man, those are stats. Uh, and he had really good pedigree. Uh, fifth overall pick, first round. Um, he was signed in 2021 uh, after a couple really good years. Only three years you sign him. Like, I know he had the injury, but, man, and only, like, this is the kind of guy I'd sign, you know, five years at least, maybe towards, like, six, seven. Um, and at 7.35, like, that's outstanding value. But the problem is, is with this performance, at the end, he's going to be demanding 10 whatever when you could have signed him at the beginning of this contract, maybe for like, I don't know, uh, 7 million for six years, the value you'd be getting is outstanding. So like they are getting now. So, um, great contract, but 
it's these kind of players you get you have to get to term um to get better long-term value better cost certainty better flexibility uh ability to round out a roster with really good players like so i don't know tough on great contract but you got to get these guys to term um next one brock besser 6.65 three years remaining uh three-year contract last year 46 points 23 goals 71 games 49 23 goals 56 games 45 uh, in 57 games hovers around 20 some odd goals per and just under a point per game so good performance um at 6.65 like i mean outstanding value so it's like but three years maybe another guy you should be locking up to term um because this was made yeah, just this past off season. So, and that's after some years of performance. It's just I don't get why you don't lock these guys up to term. Great for flexibility, but man, um, you got to secure some of these high end assets. So, not a bad contract. Obviously, a great contract, but man, uh, you might shoot yourself in the foot by doing something like that. Uh, Bo Horvat, 5.5, one year remaining of a six year contract. Uh, last year, 52 points, 31 goals, very good in 70 games. 39, 19 goals in 56 games. 53, 22 goals, 69 games. Hovers around 20 some odd goals per year. Um, under a point per game good stats again 5.5 was signed in 2017 after two good years um so in this case this is kind of like a good contract um couple years of experience so you have some track record uh yeah good performance locking up for six years is not unreasonable at 5.5 so i'd say really good contract along the lines of what i would want to do so um i think that's a good job there um and then jt miller they just signed an extension he has one year remaining, 5.25. Uh, after that, $8 million per for seven years. Um, let's have a look. Last year, 99 points, 32 goals, 80 games, very good. 46 in 53 games, 72, 27 goals, 69 games. 47 in 75 games hovers around 20 some odd goals uh and around a, uh maybe just under a point per game or around a point per game so um so quite good 5.25 great contract at that time uh he was signed 2018 <coughs> After a couple of years of experience, uh, great value at that time. Um, Eight million for seven years thereafter uh, puts him at thirty-eight. So Benning was the guy that did the previous most of the previous contracts, and then. Uh, yeah, Alvin comes in and I don't like, yeah. Okay. If he does 32 goals, 99 points a year, fantastic. But like, again, you've got 
what three wasted years of cap uh like where the caps filled up at eight million like geez don't like the term great dollar value maybe but really don't like the term so don't really like that contract so it's funny how you have a changeover in gm and some great contracts remain and then you get <laughs> some other bonehead ones in my opinion uh after that so anyways uh connor garland 4.95 four years remaining of a five-year contract last year 52 Point seventy seven games, 39 and 49, 39 and 22 goals in 68. Um, so good performance. Uh, was signed in 21 after a couple decent years, 4.95 for a relatively young guy. Not a bad deal maybe slightly high for his years before but not the worst contract so and again that's betting so did a good job and geez um yeah so the forwards locked up between what is that uh around two to ten years mostly two to four um so a lot of flexibility but some of those guys should be locked up to longer term so that's where i mean benning yeah great about keeping cap space uh but those guys should be under term and uh, man this team's gonna probably really struggle with in two to four years they're gonna struggle with uh keeping some of their good players and being under the cap and stuff like so uh good right now uh who knows how it's going to pan out in the future there um on defense quinn hughes 7.85 five years remaining uh of a six-year contract last year 68 points wow in 76 games 41 and 56 53 and 68 so some great performance was signed in 2021 after two good years and signed at 7.85 i'd say high for a defenseman but it's panned out so i mean and then 16 points he had in the playoffs in his uh first full season 16 points in 17 games so quite good i don't know uh this one's not bad but again i'm always not super high on uh putting money on defensemen so um uh, not a bad contract not a good contract i'd say uh but locked up a good guy to term so in the end the value like a good young guy to term so the value probably if he maintains his performance is going to be um really good value maybe towards the end so yeah i'd say not a bad contract uh a bit high for my taste but you know not that bad um ekman larson 7.26 five years remaining eight-year contract signed in Arizona 29 points in 79 games 24 and 46 30 and 66 44 and 81 uh looks like most of his best years are behind him uh he has five years he's they'll put him at 36 so maybe he can get back to his performance um that he's had previously so at the time of the contract uh 2018 
not unreasonable. Um, maybe the term's a bit high, eight years. But, um, yeah, uh, again, defenseman I wouldn't spend that much on, so that's where I'd not like it that much. But, again, not the worst contract. Um, and see, that's, what, $15 million to defensemen. Um, that's a lot of money to be locked up in defensemen there. So, uh, And then so defense between – Two to five years, their core, so some flexibility, um, but not the best flexibility. Um, oh, and I should touch on Tyler Myers, uh, two years, six million per uh, remaining of a five-year contract. Uh, last year, 18 points, 82 games, 21-55, 21-68. Six million. When it expires, he'll be 34. I'd say it's a bit high. Uh, I would have looked to, I don't know, my preference would have been around 4.5 maybe 5 million if you really had to but terms not bad decent track record so not not a horrible contract there um but i'd say a bit high priced again for defensemen so that's another so what is that so 15 21 million locked up in three defensemen jeez <coughs> and then another guy they just um Signed there, Ilya Mikheyev, 4.75. Four years remaining. He's a forward, I should say. Um, last year, 32 points, 21 goals, 53 games, 17 and 54, 23 and 39. So decent stats. Um, maybe slightly overpaid, not the worst contract five years based on that track record i'd say is a bit expensive so i don't like that contract or sorry i should say four years if i said five i can't remember what i just said but yeah so don't like it too much because i don't know if the value is that great but um yeah it's not the worst um and then finally, uh, Demko, their goalie, five million, four years remaining. Um, last year, nine one five save percentage, nine one five nine oh five. Uh, that's basically him, the most he's played those past three years. Um, it's a five year contract. Uh, was signed in 21, uh, which would have been after uh, essentially one year. So at the time, I would say not a great contract, really good pedigree, I guess, but um, I don't know. Uh, I wouldn't have been sure at that time to make that deal with that goalie. So um, not a horrible contract in the end because he gonna pan out but um i mean it was after his really good playoff year so but it was four games so <laughs> i mean sample size is too small to sign up to that term so we'll see how it pans out but i don't like uh uh locking someone in with that little of a track record so not to my taste but not the worst so um so cap management altogether for Vancouver, lots of flexibility, I guess, um, with their high-end guys, and that's not going to be a good thing in the end. And no flexibility with defensemen and goalies. So, And they're high-paid players that I don't think are all worth their contracts. So... 
Um, so some flexibility, but I think this is going to, yeah, it's, uh, it's not looking very good, um, in the three to five year range. So, uh, cap management, I'd give them, uh, I don't know, probably C minus all the things they should have done. They didn't do all the things they did do. They probably shouldn't have. So, um, they have space, but it's going to disappear in a couple of years. So yeah, C minus is probably what I give to Vancouver there. Uh, and then finally, moving over to Edmonton, uh, no cap space, uh, they're in IR spending, uh, GM is Ken Holland, uh, up front, some very well-known names that, uh, don't require too much discussion. Uh, Connor McDavid, 12.5 per. Uh, four years remaining. Now, I should say at the time, I didn't really like the contract because of the amount of money tied up in one player. Um, as much as he's the best player probably in the world, or arguably so, Um at the beginning it was clear that there just wasn't any space to spend on anybody else and i mean history proves that they just didn't have space so they couldn't perform well um now it's not so bad i'd say it's still maybe slightly expensive like you need these top players taking a a cut to their salary even if they deserve it to be able to accommodate other players so a great example is um, Crosby. So let's just pull up his kind of contracts here. So Crosby, $8.7 million. Uh, for 12 years, yeah, long term. Um, and at the time, maybe it would have been expensive. So, But now it's super inexpensive. Um, so... Maybe I guess not the best example. I guess maybe a better example. Uh, Malkin probably could have signed for more than he did. 6.1 for four years. Over a point per game. Lots of goals. I mean, it's hard to give perfect examples of... Uh, but, like, I mean, for all together on Pittsburgh... Highest paid player, Crosby, 8.7. Like, geez, you know how good of a roster you can fill that or how good you can fill out that roster when your highest paid player is that? Like, and everybody else is getting paid 5 million, 6 million. It's no wonder why Pittsburgh's always competitive. So that's good cap management. Um, mind you, again, like I said, maybe I was wrong to bring up the Crosby one because maybe it was expensive at the time. So, uh, maybe I'm wrong for that, but generally speaking, just if you look at the salaries spread out amongst a number of good players where you can fill out a good roster. So anyway, so that that's why I don't necessarily like even the best players in the world getting the highest salaries. So if if the team's smart, if the player is smart, they wouldn't be going for those salaries because they'd want to fill out the roster with good players to really compete. So um, anyways, not obviously not a bad contract, but for the best player in the world by, or in my opinion, but, um, anyways, I, it's not something I like, but, you know, uh, I guess maybe another way to put it is the goals per dollar spent, the value you're, you're not getting as high, even though you're getting a lot of goals out of them and a lot of points. So I don't know. Um, don't really need to go over his stats because they're outstanding and obviously he deserves the contract, but 
Um, it's tough, tough to justify spending so much uh, if you want to have a competitive team year after year and manage your, your cap. So um, dry cycle, three years remaining, 8.5 per. Um, was an eight-year contract. Uh, when was that signed? 2017. When was in August? So that would have been after two good years. So eight years for a very young guy at the time. Um, at 8.5 per I'd say is a great contract. So that's the kind of thing I mean I would have would you would want to have done with um McDavid, but maybe not realistic uh, given his stature and track record and all that. So um yeah, it's tough, but I mean very good value on dry settle. It's unreal. He's he's nearly the same points as as uh sometimes more um 55 goals and and 55 assists 110 points in 80 games like geez wow um so really outstanding value on dry sidle um so i guess combined between mcdavid and him you have great contracts i guess so maybe that's the way you could put it is all things considered well done between the two um so yeah, and then Zach Hyman, 5.5. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, six years remaining of a seven-year contract. Uh, 54 points, 27 goals. That's pretty good in 76 games. 33 points, 15 goals, 43 games uh 37 in 51 41 with 21 goals in 71 so probably around 20 somewhat goals a year under a point per game uh 5.5 per uh good value he'll be one two so he'll be 36 at the end so not the worst when it ends so the value is probably going to be good for the duration so to round out a roster great player um so good signing there uh nugent hopkins 5.125 he has um One, two, three, four, five, six, seven years remaining on an eight year contract. Um, last year, 50 points, 63 games, 35 and 52, 61 with 22 goals and 65. Hovers around 20 some odd goals and under a point per game. Uh, so, again, same story. Uh, his contract expires. Um, he'll be 36. So again, good contract, uh, good value, I'd say. And then last one for forwards. Um, Evander Kane is 5.125, four years. Uh, 39 points, 22 goals in 43 games, 49, 22 goals, 56, 47, 26 goals in 64. So good track record of scoring, uh, under a point per game, but a high, high end score, uh, It'll put him at 35 at the end of his contract. So 
yeah, you're going to get great value out of that at 5.125. So good contract there. Um, so altogether, I would say not much flexibility um, up front, but a great example of locking up good players to long term uh, at a reasonable price at least combined on the highest end, so between McDavid and Dreisaitl. So I'd say, uh, yeah, not flexible, but well done in terms of locking things up. Now, spread over two GMs, so one wasn't a good GM, and then this one I believe is probably a better one. So I don't know. Uh, you can't really give all the credit to... Holland, obviously, but so uh, I'd say good, all things considered, cap management there uh, up front. Um, on defense, Darnell Nurse, 9.25. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, eight year contract, eight years remaining. Um, Last year, 35 points in 71 games, 36 and 56, 33 and 71, uh, 41 in 82. So uh, 9.25, again, for a defenseman, I'd, I know he logs a lot of minutes. I know he's relied on heavily, and he's done uh, well, but that much, that long... He'll be 35 at the end, so good timing, I guess. If you expect his best years to be ahead of him, I don't know. Same story, don't like that kind of money going to defensemen, unless you're a Makar or something like that. Um, so don't really like that contract. Uh, and then Tyson Berry, 4.5, two years remaining. Um, 41 points, 73 games, 48 and 56, 39 and 70, uh, hovers around 40 some odd points per year. So quite good defenseman for production. Uh, second year of a three year contract at 4.5 per, like that's great value, great flexibility. Uh, maybe somebody I would have tried to get to longer term. So um, in this case, uh, yeah, somebody I would have locked up maybe for five years, the same dollar figure you could even do. I mean, he would probably go for even less if he did longer term. So I just, um, it would have been smart, in my opinion, to lock this guy up longer. But so not a bad contract, but probably could have uh, secured him for longer. Um, that's about it on defense. Uh, defense core is between two and eight years, mostly two and four. Uh, so some flexibility, some decent contracts, other one, I don't like the nurse one. Um, not the worst uh, in the world. Now, just to touch on uh, LTIR guys, Clefbaum, 4.167. Um, last year of a seven-year contract, 34 points, 62 games in 1920. Uh, 2019, 20, I should say, 28 points, 61 games, 21 and 66, 38 and 82. So, um, signed in 2015 after no track record. So, not a good contract at that time, I would say, but good value in the end. Another one of those Shirelli signings, I, I don't know. Uh, good pedigree, but I don't know. Um, 
yeah, anyways, not impactful because it's his last year on the contract. Uh, yeah, the other LTIR, Mike Smith won't talk to, not that expensive. So, um, <coughs> and then finally, Jack Campbell, five years, five million per. Um, and yeah, of course, signed just this off season. So, uh, last year, 914 save percentage, 921, 9, uh, 9.0 something uh, between the two teams prior, uh, 928. So uh, around a mid 91, maybe like a 915 save percentage you could expect out of them. Uh, so good goalie from the stats there was signed after some good track record. So at 5 million per, I'd say that's a great contract. Uh, whether or not it'll pan out, who's to say, but I think it's a good deal. Um, he'll be 35 at the end. So right in his prime as a goalie. So, um, I mean, that's, they're in great shape in that regard. So, um, so, you combine everything there. Um, yeah. Really, the only contract I don't like that much is the nurse one. You need to have a good defenseman, so maybe that's the rationale. But uh, too much money tied up in a defenseman that doesn't produce that highly. So I don't like that contract, but it's one contract out of a whole team. Um uh yeah so i mean i'd say cap flexibility again not really much but you kind of have more or less what you need they're, they're struggling i'd say their defense is a bit weak um and uh yeah, to be so I have them as my cup favorites because uh, just their high end talent is just too good. They have a solid goaltender, in my opinion, or I think he should be. Problem is the defense there. So I think they're one of these teams that can just outscore their uh, competition. Uh, like, uh, uh, Gretzky said stats are for losers. So, uh, in this case, um, sometimes what he's referring to is sometimes all you need is a stop at the right time from your goaltender. In this case, I think they're, they'll definitely get that. The question uh, is, is how high quality of shots are they going to have against their goalie with this defense? They'll have really high possession, so um, so it's really it's tough to say if they've made a mistake by putting so much money into their forwards, so much into one defenseman and not enough into the rest. So I'd say all things considered, um, God, uh, I'd say a B for their cap management is probably accurate. Everything's good, I'd say, except for the nurse contract. But the nurse contract really gets in the way. Um, and yeah, that one contract you could split between. If you got them at $7 million, which is probably reasonable for nurse, I mean... It would be an underpaid to what he's worth, but the ability to, again, have people take lower contracts to get a good team on the ice, it's not unreasonable for him to accept uh, something like $7 million or whatever a year. Um, so it sucks for them. Uh, maybe they'll... I don't know. It's... Uh, 
yeah, so altogether, it's pretty good, um, pretty well managed, uh, all things considered, but just that one contract kind of really gets in the way. So, yeah, so a B for Edmonton. So um, that covers it for the rest of the uh, Pacific Division there. Um, so just to uh, recap, We've now gone through the whole Pacific Division. Um, and uh, yeah, so some teams not so good. Uh, a lot of teams not well managed. Um, some decently managed. Uh, I'd probably say Edmonton's the best managed, but even them, or, or sorry, Anaheim's the best managed because uh, they just had tons of flexibility in there uh, restarting. But um, considering the ability to win a Stanley cup, I mean, uh, Edmonton's in the best shape with their roster. Now long-term Anaheim's got an opportunity, but they have to build a team. So that's another story. So, um, so that's it for this one. Uh, thanks for tuning in. If you like the video, hit the like button, uh, subscribe, hit the notifications to be advised of, uh, the next stream. It should be daily for, uh, the most part, um, at 5 p.m. Eastern, changing to 4 p.m. Eastern uh, when the time change happens. Um, if you liked it, share with your friends. Uh, and if you have any comments or suggestions, uh, definitely leave them in the, the comments there, especially if you have any topics you want me to cover. Um, so that covers everything. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, we'll see you again tomorrow. Yeah.